In this video we learn how to record music live from a MIDI keyboard directly into Sibelius. So you'll need to have your computer attached to a MIDI keyboard to do this. You do have another option in Sibelius 6 which is the on-screen keyboard. This button here will turn it on and if you, you can either click on notes or if you click this little button here it maps uh, one octave of the keyboard onto the keys A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K on your keyboard. So you can actually actually play from the uh, keyboard of your computer. However, this isn't going to do for our uh, cello solo in the Beethoven, which is what I want to record in. So what we're going to do is we're going to record that in live off a MIDI keyboard into the cello part. Now before you start off, the best thing is to go to the Notes menu and go down to Flexi Time Options. The reason that it's w worth looking at this first is because you can set things up here so that Sibelius will get the most accurate transcription of what you play possible. Firstly, Sibelius has got a rather unique feature called Flexi Time where it can actually follow the tempo. If you, as you speed up, Sibelius can speed up and as you slow down, Sibelius can slow down. If you're a poor keyboard player like me, you might like to turn that off just so that Sibelius is more sort of like a metronome and you've got to stay in time with it. The next one is voices. Recording into multiple voices is very useful if you're recording something like a piano part where you might want to have more than one voice uh, to show multiple rhythms at once. However, in this case, we're just recording a solo cello part, so I'm happy just to record into one voice here. Now if I click on the Notation tab, you'll see the most important setting, and it's this one, Adjust Rhythms. It's important to set the Adjust Rhythms up before you record, thinking about what the shortest note length you're going to play is. If I look at the Beethoven, the shortest note length I'm actually going to play is a crotchet. So, if I set that to crotchet now, when I play in, even if I'm slightly ahead or slightly behind the beat, Sibelius will move everything I play, adjust those rhythms so that it's notated nice and cleanly. No sort of silly ties over into demi semi quavers in the next bar or anything like that. And if you like, it's a matter of preference, you can ask Sibelius to have a go at notating staccatos and tenutos as you play them on the keyboard. Again, it probably depends on how good a keyboard player you are, whether you want Sibelius to notate those for you or not. And once that's all set up, you just click OK. Now you choose from where you want to record by simply selecting the bar. We already learned how to select a bar in the one of the previous videos. So we've selected that bar. You can hit the record button. And here's a handy little hint for recording. If your keyboard playing is not up to much but you want to have a go at recording live into Sibelius anyway, you can always drag the tempo slider down. This is the tempo slider here. And if you drag that down to the left before you record, then Sibelius will record at a slower tempo. You can speed it up later on and show everyone how fantastic your performances were. So I'm going to hit the record button. Sibelius is going to give me a bar in. And then I'm going to have a stab at recording the cello seller. and you can press the spacebar or escape to finish. All right, let's review my recording. Well, that looks like that went pretty well for me, so I'm pretty pleased with that. What do I need to fix up? Well, you can see at one point here, Sibelius has spelled the C-sharp as a D-flat, and it's understandable that Sibelius has done that. It knows that I'm currently performing in a flat key, and it probably thinks that there's a chromatic going down, and therefore, because I'm in a flat key, that should be spelled as a flat. It's easy enough to fix. If I highlight that bar, and you'll remember how to do a multiple selection, hold down Shift and click in the next bar to highlight the next bar too. And then I can simply press the Return key, or Enter if you're on a PC, and that re-spells the note. So repeatedly pressing that button will re-spell it as a flat or a sharp. Everything else looks pretty good. We're currently missing a few dynamics and phrasing marks. We're going to come on to dynamics later, but let's have a quick look now at adding um, some phrase marks. So to add a phrase mark, simply click on the first note that you would like the phrase mark to begin on, and then you press S for slur, and this automatically draws a slur to the next note. Now, we could click and drag on that to space it out, but we can also just press the spacebar 
and it will simply space it out by one note at a time. Again, click on the next note that I want to start, uh, draw a slur from, S for slur, space it out, and you can see that I can very quickly add the phrase markings that I need for this part. There's just a couple more here. Now, when you're working with phrase markings or slurs, if we zoom in on it, you'll see that the slur has got several points. So if you need to change the way that Sibelius has drawn your slur, you can drag on the end, or you can drag on any one of those particular points. You can create some pretty weird and wonderful slurs when you work like that. In this case, that's not what I need. I just need a nice, simple default slur. So that's flex time recording, and that's adding phrasing into our part two.